hello again and welcome to another Mordian Glory Warhammer 40k video. In today's episode, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I want to give you all a big update on the upcoming Mega Apocalypse event, The Fate of Thanatos. This is the massive two-day battle that I will be running in June 2024. Now, I announced this event last year and the tickets all sold out. So this is very much an update for those people that are coming, but also in case you are curious about the event, because we will be doing another one of these hopefully next year as well. Also, I appreciate that since I announced the event and put the tickets on sale, there hasn't been much official communication. I've been chatting about it to people in the Morning Glory Discord. I've been chatting about it on the streams, but I wanted to bring all of the information together on a video. And that's because... Well, video is very much the main form of communication on this channel. Not everyone joins the live streams, not everyone's in the Discord. And so it's best if I want to get the message out there and give people a good update to do a video on it. So that's what we're doing today. And the good news is it's all positive. I can now confirm that the full rules pack and mission detail and example terrain layouts have been fleshed out and confirmed, committed to pen and paper, and there is now a proper single document with all of the information in it. And I will make sure that a link to that document is down in the description below. So you can peruse that at your leisure and get all of the information that you need. Attention, Gasman. The Commissariat has detected you have not yet liked this video. Do so immediately or else you will face the Empress wrath. And anyone who has not yet subscribed to the channel will be transferred to the penal battalions. That is all. Move out! But I understand that sometimes not everything comes through 100% in the medium of text. So I'm going to briefly go over some of the key information in this video. And we'll begin with some of the general rules and information for the event. Firstly, I can confirm it is taking place on the 1st and 2nd of June 2024. That is a weekend, a Saturday and a Sunday. The venue location is Element Games in Stockport. There are a few Element Games dotted around the UK. We are going to the one in Stockport. The full address is on the first page of the rules pack. If you are coming from far away then and you're looking for somewhere to stay, there are a couple of sort of chain hotels. There's the Alma Lodge and the Premier Inn. I've not stayed in those personally, but I know a lot of people have, and they say they are serviceable. They're not five star, but it's a clean bed and sheets every night. To also confirm, the tickets are now sold out. All 75 tickets sold out, so there's no way to buy a new ticket. If you are interested in coming, then there is a channel in the Morning Glory Discord for buying and selling of tickets. So you might be able to get one from someone who is no longer able to attend the event. If you are coming to the event, you need, I will say it again, you need to fill in the player sign-up sheet. The link to that is on the very top of the second page of the rules pack. In there, you'll let me know which team you want to be on. Now, at the moment, we've got more people who want to be on the Imperium team than the Chaos slash Xenos team. This means that more than likely, we are going to have to bring some people over from the Imperium to the Chaos side to make sure that it is nice and balanced. Don't panic. This will have no impact on what you can run at the event. If you've got a full guard army, you can still run that. You don't need to have Chaos or Xenos just because you're on the Chaos or Xenos team. There's plenty of law reasons in-game narrative that we can say why you're on the chaos team now maybe your commander is corrupt maybe Cha chaos did it chaos did it that's that's a catch-all reason it won't affect what units you can run or anything though it's just in the interest of having two balanced teams and i guarantee you even if you're pretty imperial diehard you will have a lot of fun whichever team that you're on and what i'd like to do is ask you all for a big favor anyone who's currently put themselves down for the imperium team but who really doesn't mind being on the Chaos team, please go into the player sign-up sheet, even if you've already filled it in, and just next to where you said which team you want to, just put all Chaos, or just put both. Just let me know that you don't mind being switched over. Unless you have a really, 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 really good reason for being on a specific team, when I switch people round, uh, that, or when I assign the final teams, that will be that. Now, a good reason isn't, oh, I just want to be on the Imperium team, I always want to be on the Chaos team. A good reason has to be like, 
me and my friends have been planning a group strategy for 12 months and we were all going to be on the Imperium team and now two of us have ended up on the Chaos team. Can we swap round? Then, yeah, of course, I'll do my best to make sure that mates play together. That's not a problem. But like I said, you may find yourself getting switched over, but please don't worry about it even slightly. We had it last year and it was it didn't make any difference. There was no problems and it still was an awesome event. Now, there's loads of details in the rules pack. Read the schedule. Uh, 9 o'clock open on the first day. Game on 10.30. And we're playing until about 7-ish or until Element kicks us out. We might be able to get a bit longer. It depends on if Element wants us there longer or not. Uh, and it's similar on day two as well. Lunch is included on both days. It will either be sandwiches or it will be half a pizza each. If you're someone with a big appetite, don't worry. Element has loads of drinks and snacks available. And there's also lots of places to get food around the venue. You can even get fast food delivered to the venue. They've got a whole like system with like QR codes in the venue and everything. It's awesome. So food will not be an issue. As for your army lists, you will be using the 10th edition rules. Anything in your codex index is allowed. There's no rule of three. The only sort of restriction on lists is epic heroes are still one per player. But yes, you can have more than one Lord Soul of them, more than one Abaddon. That's not an issue. It's just one per player. Uh, and legends are allowed. It's a narrative event, guys. You can bring all of the legends units that you possibly want and just have fun with them. Conversions and scrap built are also allowed as long as it is clear at a glance what the unit is meant to be. And your army list can be up to 5,000 points. Now, this is a guideline. You can bring 10,000, 20,000 points. You can bring 2,000 points. It really doesn't matter. But the guideline is 5,000 points. Bear in mind that each team only has one hour per turn. So it's quick turnarounds, one hour, one hour, one hour, one hour, okay? So if you bring a lot of points, you might not get to use all of it in one turn. So bring what you can manage in an hour, guideline of a max of 5,000. You do not need to submit an army list for this event. It is not a tournament. It's a big old narrative game. Turn up with what you want on the day and have fun with it. The only caveats, as it were, is all models must be fully painted we're trying to create a really immersive environment and there's nothing like breaking the immersion like gray models so no gray models everything must be battle ready as per the gw guide there is a link to that in the rules pack yes your models must be base clear bases are allowed but three colors minimum properly painted at least a finger scoop of astro granite the better the painted the better of course but you do need to, at the very least, be battle ready. Now, whilst this isn't technically an army list thing, it might affect your army. There is no command points in this event. There's just too many. Too many players, too many shenanigans going around. Instead, what we do is we say that there is a maximum of six stratagems that can be used on each table per player turn. Not the bat around, but the turn. Now, obviously, there'll be lots of different factions and all this kind of stuff, but you can use six stratagems, and that's for your whole team on that table. So that's one CP reroll between you all, one smoke screen between you all, one reinforcements of using guard between you all, okay? I know that seems very, very restrictive, but trust me, it makes things go a lot smoother. So don't worry about the Lord Solar giving you bonus CP. Don't worry about Creed giving you free fields of fire, anything like that. Six stratagems out of all the options per team, per table. Missions and objectives are going to be different in the event as well. There's no primary objective points. There's no secondary cards or anything like that. Rather, there's going to be bespoke, narrative-themed, fluffy quote unquote, realistic objectives for you to achieve. So it's not just a big battle with just killing each other as the main goal, but you're going to have an actual set of objectives like you would do if you were fighting a real battle. So, for example, if you're storming I Primus, the Imperial capital on Thanatos, and your chaos, your first objective will be to breach the walls. You need to get inside the city. If the Imperium keeps you out of the walls the entire event, well, then clearly you've not made any progress and you'll lose that table. 
But if you get inside the walls and you start storming forward and you take the central fort, because there'll be a big, like, fort in the middle of the city, then you take that, then it will be a draw. You haven't conquered the city, but you have breached the walls and you've also managed to make significant progress into the city itself. The chaos to win unequivocally. If you breach the walls, take the fort, and then capture the governor's palace and execute the governor, then that'll be a big win for chaos, not only on that map, but on the entire campaign. So it's not like there's a single circle like or an objective card you have to do. There will be realistic objectives for you to achieve on each of the battles. And there are going to be eight giant boards. Each one of these boards will be... Well, they're going to be big. This is not six by four. It's not 44 by 60. We're going to be pushing loads of tables together. There will be a bit of variety in the size of tables. You might have some which are 12 by four. You might have others which are going to be uh, 16 by four. It's going to be really, really big. You're going to have some boards which are going to be more hammer and anvil style. You know, like you're driving up, you sort of trying to spearhead into a particular sector. Others will be Dawn of War, but there's not going to be any table quarters or anything like that. That. So you're either going to be deploying on the short edge or the long edge. All of the different tables are covered in the rules pack, but to give you the headlines, we've got Hive Primus, Manufactorum, the Oslan Shield, the Spirit of Yarrick Space Station, the Garden of Kadesh, the Deep Woods, the Underhive, and the Inquisitorial Quarantine Zone. A brief overview of each terrain type and the kind of objectives you can expect to encounter on each board is in the rules pack and there's also some pictures for each of the terrain types as well so you'll get an idea of what a forest board looks like what an urban board looks like and what an industrial board looks like and finally at the bottom of the rules pack you will find the law now i've taken my time to type up uh almost 10 pages of law for this event covering everything from the background to the planet all the way through to the events of the first war so obviously we had the event last year which was the first time we ran one of these big battles and i've gone through and uh in sort of a narrative format given a summary of what happened in the first event and how that has set us up for this second event. So this will be a continuation of the story. Don't worry if you weren't at the first event, it's fine. The main thing is a big battle. The lore is just there for those people that really like to marinate into it and get into the narrative and all that kind of good stuff. But if you don't read any of the lore, it won't have any effect on the battles and, and how you play in the game. There is a little bit of extra lore at the bottom as well regarding the different factions. So principally, this is a chaos, Tyranid Imperium kind of battle that's going on, but I've made sure there's at least one paragraph for all of the factions, Eldar, Dark Eldar, Necrons, Orcs, Tau, uh, and even the Leagues of Votan, so that there is a little bit of flavor and justification for why your faction might be here. That's just a guide though. This is just a little bit that I came up with. I fully encourage all of you to share the lore and factions a lot of your faction uh, down in the comment section, down in the Discord, and to just really, really embrace it. Because we are forging the narrative hard with this event, and it's all about that fluff. One very, very last thing to mention. If you are not sure what the hell I am talking about in this video regarding big events and everything, or you're someone who really wants to get a good idea, a feel for what the boards are going to look like, what the battles are going to be like, how the missions are going to play out, then I highly encourage you all to check out the video that I'll link at the end of this episode. It's a big overview. It's almost like a, an after-action report, as it were, similar to the tournament style ones, but for the last event. It's over, it's about an hour long, I should say, and it covers everything so if you want to sort of get a sneak preview of what to expect then check that video out but that just about covers everything i hope you guys are hyped up and excited for the event i know i am if you've got any questions make sure you get them down in the comment section below i'll do my best to answer them also i'll be in the discord as well answering any questions there i also encourage you all to subscribe just to make sure you don't miss any other future updates for example when the teams get announced
Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is a lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patrons you guys are amazing truly the lifeblood of the channel i could not do more during glory full-time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patrons these are the war masters, the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty. To a heartfelt thank you to Alex Dengal, Bon Bon Vert, Mad Larkin, Marcus Roberts, Mark Panconi, RJ Scorpion, Swordfish Trombone, Try Again Bragg, John Stubbs, Nick Wolf, Diesel Fox, and August Barney. Seriously guys, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Your support is incredible and it makes a huge difference. Thank you so much. That's all for now. Hope you've all enjoyed today's video. And of course, as always, see you guys next time.